Video games are gonna rot your brain. Stop playing them right now. Actually, don't. The opposite is true. I want you to all show this video to your parents out there who are wondering, are video games rotting our brains? Are video games terrible for my child? In fact, the opposite is true. We went through the 90s where, of course, we had Tipper Gore and other people really vilifying video games and telling us it was terrible for us to be playing these things. But in fact, the science is in. This is not me saying this. The science from multiple peer-reviewed studies is in and overwhelmingly playing video games actually improves our brains. But now, now I should mention this with a caveat here, right? Yes, there are entire forums devoted to this on Reddit where people who have played World of Warcraft, massive multiplayer online game, who've had you know, destroyed relationships, they have, uh, you know, have all sorts of issues because they've just devoted their lives to playing this massive multiplayer online experience. But that is few and far between. That is a very specific caveat that we want to put out here at the very beginning of this. So you might say, you know someone who gave up their whole life just to play World of Warcraft. Yeah, that's an addiction. And of course, addictions like anything, whether it's smoking cigarettes or alcohol or anything like that, are detrimental to our health. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about casual video game playing. 20 minutes here, one hour there, two hours there. That's the type of video game playing we're talking about in a healthy lifestyle, right? You're going to school, you've got a job, you've got a healthy relationship, maybe you take a walk with the dog, but you enjoy the recreation of playing video games. It improves our brain, particularly among young people. So I've been wanting to do this video for a while because Occasionally, I will po post a video and someone will say, oh, I didn't realize, Clayton, you were a gamer. I've lost all respect for you. And I ask that person, what are you talking about? Why? Like, well, video games are so bad for you. Uh, well, you don't know what you're talking about, actually. <laughs> Let's talk about the data. Let's talk about the science. You, sir, are uneducated. There's been a number of big studies that have looked at the, vi the relationship of the brain and playing video games over the years. And I just wanna go through a few of them so that you can take this back to your parents, if you wanna share it with your parents, or you can share it with your children um, so that they have a better, healthier understanding about the benefits of playing video games. And just as a little side note here, we were just on a trip, the family, and uh, we brought our Nintendo Switch you know, to play, and my daughter, my seven-year-old daughter, beat her very first game ever. She got Captain Toad Treasure Tracker for Christmas, and it was all problem-solving puzzles that she had to solve the entire time in the game. And she was so excited when the credits rolled, and she said, Daddy, I beat my first game. And then she sat for like 20 minutes and explained in detail to me how each of the puzzles worked and how difficult the levels that she, f most of the levels that she found, how she had to move an item here and knock these bricks down in order to get past. So she was problem solving the entire time and was fully engaged with it. So when the kids wake up on a Saturday morning and they want to sit and just watch, you know, YouTube videos or Netflix or whatever, I tell them, no, no, when you wake up, you know, wake up and, you know, let your mind wake up and then you guys can play like your Switch or something like that. But I don't want you sitting there sort of blindly with your mouth open watching Netflix videos or things. So I want them to be engaging in this way. So, yeah, I'm a good dad in that way. I encourage them to play video games. Okay, I want to get into some of the data here and I'm going to just go through this. And this is, I thought, probably the most comprehensive study from the 1990s. This is a Daphne Bavier and Sean Green. They did this big study at the University of Rochester. And they began to explore the idea of unconventional, first of all, the unconventional idea that actually playing video games could impact or even aid with neuroplasticity. And I thought this was, which is the process where the brain changes and of course adapts to new experiences. And we know how important neuroplasticity is for brain health, right? Warding off Alzheimer's, dementia, and if you want to learn a new skill, we're creating new synapses in our brain. And after years of research, they didn't just spend like a week on this. They spent years doing the study. They found that action games in particular, games where reflexes, reaction time, like Fortnite, for instance, uh, hand-eye coordination uh, are challenged, like Doom or Quake or Team Fortress Classic, or like I said, um, you know, uh, Fortnite or Call of Duty or any of those types of games, 
They provided tangible cognitive advantages that help us in everyday life. According to their research, they found that individuals who regularly play action games demonstrated improved ability to focus on visual details, useful for reading fine print and legal documents, or in prescription bottles of, of, of medications. They also displayed heightened sensitivity to visual contrast, important when driving in like thick fog, for instance. They, the multitasking required to switch back and forth between reading a menu and holding a conversation with a dinner partner also came much more easily. But the research went on and on and on. So their ability to think on their feet was measured, was, was demonstrably measured as a result of action games their ability for spatial awareness and being able to focus on visual details uh, is really fascinating. Next up, let's look at a study from 2015, and this is from the University of California, Irvine, and they show significant evidence the cognitive benefits of playing video games improved memory. And this was great for older patients. They found that patients who were actively engaged in uh, video games and, and remembering certain things as you navigate different menus. I'm thinking of like Metroid Prime Remastered, right? Think about having to remember where you were. There's no breadcrumbs in that game, right? There's no broken doors or walls that you can say, oh, I was already here. You've got to remember. Or like Tomb Raider, for instance. You've got to like navigate your way through these areas and remember things. So that spatial memory, you know how important it is when you found something specific and you have to go back to it. Another study looked at 2,000 children. This is totally separate from the University of California study. This is the National Institutes of Health. They found that in these 2,000 children who played more than two to three hours of video games, they significantly improved their test scores. Yes, their cognitive skills like working memory, they significantly outperformed kids who didn't play video games on tests. The brain scans shows that those kids who played video games had more brain activity associated with demanding tasks than those who didn't. These patterns, of course, also related to impulse control and memory associated with playing video games specifically. They also show that as the person ages, their memory naturally declines, we know this. And regular video game playing shows a positive way of staving off a possible dementia and Alzheimer's in older patients. Isn't that crazy? So playing video games can improve your overall cognitive ability um, as you age, which is great for grandpa who wants to sit down and play some video games. Another couple of studies looked at spatial awareness, spatial visualization, and being able to relate in an environment in a 3D space. And they found that those people who played video games performed much better in the real world with spatial visualizations, things like parallel parking, uh, things like uh, organizing your closet, Good spatial visualization, also uh, fantastic in different STEM careers, S-T-E-M careers for spatial visualization. There's a whole separate study on perception and vision as well. High action video game playing, for instance, improved their ability to distinguish patterns, which is something that scientists thought you could never improve, your ability to um, uh, improve upon contrast. They thought that's not something we can improve upon. In fact, those, those kids who played uh, video games five hours a week of, of, of action games for nine or for nine weeks showed a 43 percent improvement in their contrast sensitivity huge improvement something they thought they couldn't improve and they were because they were playing video games one of the biggest things that they discovered for playing video games is decision making this was dramatic in fact increases in plasticity in the brain on your brain's ability to change in response to learning Multiple studies found this. So playing games like Need for Speed or Call of Duty, your ability to stay on your toes and be very quick thinking and make split second decisions was vital, of course, for playing those games. Playing video games then lets you direct your attention towards a specific task and then receive stimulation as you complete those challenges. Since your brain knows how to handle these smaller decisions, it can quickly move on to more complicated ones, the study says. The more you learn, the better your brain adapts, and you can make smarter decisions faster. So faster decision making is an incredibly beneficial decision uh, skill in everyday life as you accomplish more when you make trivial decisions quickly. 
So playing video games found that you dramatically improved your fast decision-making skills. Instead of wasting time deciding, how, what shirt am I gonna wear? I need to spend five minutes, 10 minutes wasting time on menial, small, trivial things. You can make them fast and move on and get on to more important, bigger, bigger developmental tasks with your day. It's like Steve Jobs. He's like, he got sick of worrying about what kind of shirt he was gonna wear every day. So you know what he decided to do? He bought all black shirts. He's like, I don't need to worry about this. I've got much bigger things to worry about in my life. I don't need to worry about what shirt I'm gonna wear. I'm gonna wear a black shirt every day. That's it, done. <laughs> and we are calling it iPhone. <laughs> Problem solving, another big one that they discovered had in almost every genre of video game involves problem solving. Whether it's figuring out a puzzle or finding something, finding the fastest escape route, discovering something, you have to use problem solving, memorization, you have to analyze situations. And what they found is, in fact, the University of South Carolina found that video games stimulate how players process the world. Players solve problems and engage in virtual environments and become more likely to apply those lessons they learned and those experiences they gain in situations outside the game. So they found that they took those skills they learned in video game playing and applied them in the real world. So I think problem solving to me is one of the biggest benefits of playing video games. I see it in my kids. I see in my kids that they're willing to then to tackle other problems and solve puzzles in the real world as a result of playing uh, games on online or playing their playing their switch or something like that they're able to take those skills and move those to the real world what about mood are kids just like cut off from the world are they going to be moody all the time when they're playing video games in fact the opposite is true that researchers found that it's a great way to unwind and relax and then they actually have a more positive sense of well-being less anxiety less depression Kids who play video games are less likely to have anxiety. Kids who play video games are less likely to be depressed. And adults, by the way, big category in this, less likely to be depressed, less likely to have anxiety as a result of playing video games. I point you to the video that I just did recently on Elon Musk and his favorite video games. And in fact, he talked about getting into a flow state. Uh, he's a big video game player. It's his main form of recreation. He's busy. His, he says his brain is like a storm. It's constantly thinking and working on problems. For him, one of the only ways for him to calm down and to have less anxiety and less stress is to play video games. And I'll just wrap it up with this. More research also shows that when kids play video games, they solve and complete the puzzle. They actually want to get to the end of the challenge. And that teaches us in life to complete things, get things done, see the end of the game, get through the puzzle. And I think that's incredibly powerful. I really, you know, I tell my kids, we don't give up in our family. We do not give up. And we are going to beat that game. You're going to complete that game. You're going to complete that schoolwork. You're not going to quit that sports team that you tried out for and you're a part of now. You're not giving up. You're going to continue and see it through. And video games, according to the research, shows that that it, it, it helps train our brains to complete the puzzle, complete the challenge, and finish the game. Anyway, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. Again, I'm really excited about this research, I think, and I've read a couple of books now on this topic, um, especially in younger children and how they're developing their brains. I just read a book on the teenage mind for my son. He just turned 13, so I want to understand what that's like, you know, as a teenage boy. And the research in the book, even the mother, the author of the book, she's a doctor. She's like, you know, I thought it was going to be bad. My son's sitting there playing Fortnite a lot. And she's like, I just can't admit it. She's like, sadly, she's like, I wanted to say that it was bad for him. She's like, it's not. The opposite is true. It's actually reducing his anxiety, helping his problem solving, improving his cognition. And, uh, and I think that's a good thing to end on here because Fortnite is a lot different than say like World of Warcraft, like I mentioned at the beginning where you're in these massive multiplayer online campaigns and you're, you know, you're, you can really screw up your relationships and all of that kind of stuff. Fortnite, they're 20 minute battles, 20 minutes, you know, and then you can, and it really talks about in the research, you can kind of get in and then you're, you're done. I did a 20 minute battle, good, now I'm off to something else. So it's not sucking up your whole world. Again, yes, an addiction is a bad thing. So if you're fully addicted, where 24 hours a day you're playing video games and you're not leaving the house and you're not doing anything else, that is an addiction. That's not what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about casual video game playing and it really does work. It does improve our brains. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this, guys, and we'll see you in the next video.